Hey guys, what's up? Chris Super here, enjoying my new digs. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the solo from the Deep Purple Classic Highway Star. Let's take a look. Alright guys, let's have a look at the first section. We're going to start off with this little D minor 7 arpeggio. I'm sliding into 12 of the 4th string, playing 10 of the 3rd, and then bending 13 of the 2nd string. I do that again, but this time I'm going to add a 4th note. So that's going to resolve to 10 of the 3rd on that F note. Okay, then the next phrase I work into is this. Let's slow that down. I'm going to slide with a flat finger into 10 of the 3rd and the 2nd string. So I slide into that 10, roll that 2 from the 3rd string to the 2nd, and I work into this phrase. So I'm going to bend that 12th fret upper semitone, play it again at the bottom, and play 10 of the 1st string jumping to 13 of the 2nd. That's going to sound like this all together. At the end of that, I'm going to do almost like a slight quarter bend on 10 of the 3rd string. Then I've got two 12s in a row. I'm going to be playing 12 of the 4th into 12 of the 3rd. And you will notice that I'm using different fingers for that. I don't know why, it just feels better to sort of... Sometimes I don't like to roll, so having the individual tips uh, can give it a different vibe. But if you want to stay with the flat finger, that is totally cool as well. We're going to resolve that after that 12 roll from the 4th to the 3rd string back to 10 of the 3rd. All together we should have this thus far. Hopefully that's all making sense. Then we're working to... Well, just that whole thing twice and then it goes into this phrase. So what I've got here is two bends from eight of the second string. I'll do another two. And then I kind of work into, it's almost like an A minor Dorian run. So I've got another bend from eight, so we've got, and then I guess a fifth bend. Once I've brought it up, I bring it down, then I'm gonna play eight, seven, five on the second string. At the end of that, Let's slow that down. I'm playing five of the third string, seven of the fourth, then seven of the third. At the end of that, I've got a slight quarter bend on five of the third, and then I wanna play seven of the fourth twice. So it'll go like this. Okay, at the end of that, I'm gonna hit the seventh fret one more time. So it'll go. And that'll work into our next phrase, which is this. Is exactly the same bar twice in a row. I'm going to do a slight bend on five of the third, then play seven five on the fourth string, sort of go. I do that idea two times in a row, and then I've just got a two note idea. I do the slight bend and then play seven of the fourth string, so it's going to go. It's almost like two groups of three and then a group of two, and as I said, we're going to do that twice. 
There's a little bit more after that, but let's have a look at what we've got thus far from the eight bends. At the end of that, I've got six bends from eighth fret. That's from the second string, so I go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then to start the second section, we're going to hit that 13th fret bend on the second string on the offbeat. And that'll get us ready for that phrase that follows. So that's all of the first section. I'm going to play it again at a relatively slow pace and then we'll do it again even slower with some tabs. Time with some tabs. Guys, let's have a look at the second section. We're going to start off with this phrase. I've got a bend from 13 of the second string, and this is kind of rolling over from that first second, first section offbeat rather. So we got. I'm going to bend that 13 up and back on the second string, and then I roll. What I've got there is I'm playing two tens in a row from the second to the third, and then that eventually ends on ten of the fourth string. I'm going to repeat that phrase twice. I've got a very similar idea for the next uh, arpeggio. So that's kind of a G minor idea. I'm bending from 13 to the second string again. This time I'm kind of ending in an A minor shape. So I'm playing 11 of the second string and then 12, 12 on the next two strings. Then from that point, I work into this phrase. It's kind of working into C major. I'm playing 15 up and back on the second string. And then that kind of inversion of a C major triad, I'm playing 13 of the second, 12 of the third, and 14th fret of the fourth string. And you'll notice that pretty much all of those arpeggios are exactly the same thing twice. So we'll go back to the start and have a look at what we've got thus far. Hopefully that's all making sense, then I work into this. What I have here is some unison bends a la Queens of the Stone Age or Jimmy Page. I'm playing 10th fret of the second string and 12 of the third. I play those together and then just bring that 12th fret up a whole step and eventually those notes will meet at the same A note. And we want to do four of those in a row and they're all chromatic, they're right next to each other. So I'm going from the 10th fret. 11, 12, 13. And then we work back uh, into the first idea again, but this time there's a couple of extra bends. So the first arpeggio is identical. It's exactly the same, and then it goes. So that G minor arpeggio, the second one has two bends on the first and then only one on the second. Then when I get to the C major, once again, I've got two bends at the front. And then just a single. And then once again, I go back to the chromatic unison bends. So it's nearly the same thing twice. It's just got those uh, bending variants on the second and third arpeggios on the second loop. So let's go right back to the start of the section, play it at a gentleman's pace, and then again, even slower with some tabs.
song with some tabs. Okay, third section. This is when things get uh, shreddy. What I'm really doing here is it almost sounds like it's doing straight sort of sixteenths or a triplet. But it's not quite a triplet because to me it sounds more like a gallop. So my picking pattern is exactly the same for every one of those. It's almost like, like an Iron Maiden kind of rhythm that I'm doing here. So that first idea is I'm doing that gallop rhythm playing 10, 11, 13 on the second string. If you want to, you could have, you could almost add a backstroke in at the end that's a dead note, but I prefer to just have a complete uh, 16th note pause there and then just start again. I'm gonna do that rolling group of three notes eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then from there, the next group is also a group of eight. I'm playing 11, 13, 15, 5, 6, 7, and the same intervals, the double whole step gap. I'm playing 13, 15, 17. Once again, another group of eight. If you keep in mind that this was written in, I think, 1972, this was like the most shreddy outlandish thing that had ever happened to guitar music at the time. So uh, it, it doesn't sound that ridiculous by today's standards, but at the time it was super crazy. So. Be respectful. Um, after we've done eight of that, it goes into this phrase. So let's slow that down. I'm sliding into 17 of the first string. Then I've got three open notes after that. Now the next thing that you'll notice that I'm doing is I'm doing like this sort of two note chromatic and then two extra open notes. So that's gonna be quite a similar theme as I'm descending down. So I'm gonna play 15, 14 with two open notes. So we've got. And 14, 13 with two open notes. And I'm going to continue that idea all the way back to 9, 8. So from the start of that phrase, after I've done the 9, 8 with the two open notes, I'm going to start that whole phrase again from 10, 11, 13. And it'll do that whole loop exactly the same two times in a row. There's a longer variation after the second one, but we'll uh, we'll save that for section four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, the whole thing only once through, and then I'll do it at a relatively slow pace, and then we'll do it again with tabs. One more time with some tabs. Guys, last section, this is gonna start off with a very similar chromatic idea that we saw in section three. So it's that idea, but we're gonna be starting from 12, 11. So I'm gonna go 12, 11 with the double open note. And I'm gonna take that all the way to two, one with double open. So I'm basically just gonna go all the way up the neck until I run out of notes. Okay, so there's nothing left at that point other than to start ascending up. So as soon as I run out of notes with two one open, I go three two double open and start working my way up till eventually I end on seven six open open. So that's gonna go like this. So if we put that whole idea together from the start of section four, we're gonna be going from 12 to two one and then eventually ending on seven six. Let's see what that sounds like.
hopefully that makes sense. Then I work into this phrase. Okay. So I'm kind of working around an A minor pentatonic, but I have the added major six, which sort of has a Dorian flavor. And then also the, uh, the, flat si the flat five, which is sort of the bluesy note. So I'm going like this. Let's slow that down. I'm doing a bend from eight of the second string, jumping to five of the first. Then from that point, I've got eight, seven, five across the second and the third string. So it's still quite pentatonic-y, but with those added extra notes, we end up with the three note per string pattern now. At the end of that, we're kind of like a circular motion here. I'm playing seven of the fourth into seven of the third. At the end of that, I'm playing five of the third into seven of the fourth all together. All together now from the start of that band. Okay, the next phrase is quite similar, but there's a, a note or two omitted. So the main thing that I notice uh, when I play these two phrases back to back is when I get to the second string, there's no Dorian major six anymore. So I'm bending eight of the, the second, jumping to five of the first, and then just going straight from eight to five on the second string. Then it goes. At that point, I'm playing eight, seven, five on the third and jumping to seven of the fourth. At the end of that, I'm gonna play seven, five on the third string and seven, five, seven on the fourth. That's gonna sound like this. So that most recent phrase. At the end of that, I'm gonna hit five of the third string twice and add some vibrato. If you have um, a whammy on your person, you can go nuts with that, but I think you get just as um, effective sound out of some sexy vibrato. That is all of the final section. Let's go right back to the start, play it at a gentleman's pace, and then do it again even slower with some tabs. time with some tabs. And that was the solo from Deep Purple's Highway Star. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please feel free to check out my Udemy courses and my video courses on chrissuper.com. I also have all of those available in book format as well if you want to up your chops in shredding, sweeping the data and tapping, modal understanding, improvisation, even riff writing. That book is coming soon. Uh, I've got it all there, so check it out. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. I'll catch you all very soon.